signals to travel from one cell to another and onwards through the brain. No one knows exactly how, but the dopamine stimulates pleasure pathways in the brain. It gives Greg a chemical high. Whenever we eat or have sex or do anything else to further our survival, our brains reward us with dopamine. It's our brain's way of making sure we survive. But these survival drives can be easily hijacked. Because the brain runs on chemicals, we can fool it using chemicals. All he said was, I have what it takes. I ain't selling. We gotta go straight in for the kill. I'm a shark. Alcohol passes into Greg's bloodstream from his stomach almost instantly. His blood circulates it around his entire body. Extra thick blood vessel walls protect his brain from most toxins in the blood. But alcohol molecules are so tiny that they slip through with ease. Just seconds after taking a sip, alcohol is floating through the fluid of Greg's brain. They even gave me this, look. State of the art. Nice. Today's my lucky day. Cheers. <laughs> Cheers. Somehow, alcohol stimulates the brain to release dopamine. Every other addictive drug has the same effect. And if Lord turns up, I'm gonna play it cool. Well, Greg is getting a chemical high without doing anything to further his survival. All right, do you girls want a drink? Ah, oh, excellent. <laughs> Greg is hooked on dopamine. Yeah, yeah, thanks. And he's just seen an opportunity for another hit. Another survival drive is kicking in. The drive to reproduce. Laura. Hi. You made it then? Mm. Had to dodge a few taxis to get here. <laughs> yeah, I like your dress. It's very nice. It goes well with your eyes. Yeah, I think it's a bit revealing, do you? No. Just as in his encounter with the taxi, Greg's limbic system is taking over his body again. But this time, the trigger isn't danger, it's desire. The primitive brain has only one way of shifting Greg's body up a gear. Again, his heart begins to race. And adrenaline surges through his bloodstream. His body may be reacting the same way, but he reads the signals differently. Now he's not scared, he's aroused. Did you cut yourself, Shane? It's okay. The capillaries beneath the skin of Greg's face are swelling, bringing more blood to the surface. And my race is a bit blunt. By making Greg blush, his animal brain is telling Laura that he's sexually aroused. But his higher brain is trying to be cool. Yeah. yeah. You should see my legs. They're torn to shreds. The conflict between his two brains is making him anxious. Laura! Oh, I've got to go. That party I told you about. Come if you want. Yeah. Maybe later. Where is it? Hang on. Greg's higher brain is just about keeping him in check. For now. <laughs> Two bottles of beer later, Inside Greg's skull, the balance of power is changing. Like a sponge, his brain is soaking up alcohol, and alcohol switches brain cells off. 
At the point where the electrical signals pass from one cell to another, alcohol molecules dissolve into the cell membrane and start to block the signals. The cell can no longer transmit messages through his brain. The effects of alcohol are felt in all parts of Greg's brain, but it hits first in his elaborate cerebral cortex. With his higher rational brain muted, his lower animal brain is free to take control. Thousands of years of evolution are dissolved in a few bottles of beer. two other parties. Yeah. Should we dance? As Greg sees another chance to reproduce, his primitive brain commands his body to produce sweat. His two and a half million sweat glands can make up to five pints of sweat in an hour. Sweating is mainly designed to cool Greg down, but it has another sexual role. Deep inside the pores in his armpit, testosterone is being converted into a chemical called androsterone and carried by sweat to the surface. Tiny bacteria which live on Greg's skin feast on the androsterone. The waste product of their meal is a strong scent. This scent may be the human equivalent of pheromones, powerful chemicals which trigger mating behavior in other animals. Laura too is giving off a scent which has a powerful effect on Greg. In the roof of his nostril is the only part of his brain exposed to the outside world. As scent molecules waft in, they strike nerve endings, sending signals straight into Greg's primitive brain. Unlike all our other senses, smell shortcuts the higher brain and plugs directly into the limbic system. This is why smells can inflame the unconscious animal drives independent of our rational minds. Greg's biggest sex organ is his brain. Alcohol may be blocking signals in his higher brain, but the pleasure pathways in his primitive brain can still be activated with dopamine. Greg's limbic system is rewarding him for trying to promote the survival of his genes. Ten percent of the area in his brain, which interprets touch, is linked to the nerves in his lips. <laughs> when he and Laura kiss, she is effectively stimulating one-tenth of his body at once. <laughs> 